Aha. Where is my stream URL? That's my question. Share. Let me try to advertise. It's going to be fun logging in in Discord. Stefan and so on. Hey, Aditya, how was the audio? Oh, I can use the phone to log in to Discord. I think I have the volume on max, but it's not super loud. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not logged in either on Discord on the phone. <laughs> hmm. That's a little lame. I'm sorry, I have to, okay, good. I have to do some login stuff. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. I even need to unlock my secret hard drive part just to log into Discord. Words. I'm almost done, I swear. Um, Discord login. Yes, Discord, I'm human. I guess my password is wrong. <laughs> oh God. What is happening? Oh my God. Uh. Hmm. Let's 
So no Discord today, that's stupid. Or I can go in the old account, old uh, Google account. Yeah, I know this is super boring right now. Just one second. Now find the stream URL again. And post. Streaming now. Okay. Ooh. That was some work. Okay. Welcome, core team. When is the internship ending? This week, right? 10th of August, when did we start building a new team? So yeah, the investment has come, four digit euros. And I actually bought something. I bought uh, a used ThinkPad, which supposedly works fine, was very cheap and has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And it should have a very long battery time. Like I can travel anywhere and it has like up to 20 hours of battery time. It's amazing. And this computer here I use right now, it sometimes crashes. So uh, it's good to have another computer. I'll try to spend not much more of the money only for the project, only for people working on the project, basically because this is the chance I have to use this time, this money to make cool software and then do the crowdfunding. Um, but it's good to have some, something working already when we do the crowdfunding, not just do vaporware and uh, video. Um, and I think we can go to image recognition stuff because I think there is an opportunity there. We did all this text related things and making this text dialog engine is really hard. Uh, unless you put a lot of work in it and make all the dialogues manually more or less. Even then it's really complicated. And it's also not so impressive maybe. It's just text. Image recognition is obviously immediately impressive. So um, if I go to the new gazelle, the image gazelle, oh, okay, that's log let's me log in, that's nice. That is very nice. We should make this website really good. Uh, the advantage is that it's almost empty uh, as opposed to the original Gazelle that has over 100,000 objects. A lot of crap in it. So we should, this one is easier to handle and it's also faster <laughs> because the number of objects slows it down kind of. Um, where is Isha? Is Isha also there? I only see one of the core members. Well, she can watch it later, but it would be nice to have her online too. Yeah, so this we should make actually good. I hid the base list of objects, which is kind of stupid, I guess. So, because you have to click on the drop down just to find anything. You can go here too but this should be changed. Oh, it's raining. Hope it doesn't screw up the audio. And we should make a general navigation for this. Every object should be in the navigation 
like right away like what is this it's a nice icon but let's use this area here to allow people to find stuff so Oh, massive storm. Massive storm coming. Okay, here's the main source for the eye gazelle. And where did I hide the object list? I think here. Yep, here I hide all the items and I put it in the drop down. Is there a way I can show the source and the website? Maybe that's possible. Yeah, that sounds doable. Let's make a flag. If move mm, enough items to misc. And we default to false. There and compile and have a sip. Why did you just throw me out? What's that? Oh. Oh, okay, for one second, yeah, it's a bit stupid. When the i website reloads, it uh, shows the other website instead where I'm not plugged in. Never mind. And now we have here, we at least have the complete object list and the usual ugly layout. And we actually have some image recognition stuff here. Isha actually made some change here. We can render text in different colors now. We coded this like together last week. And here we are missing the central command show HTML. And I will hack this in also. No hacking for showing. Show HTML. Because it's an extension in the original Gazelle. Oh. What was my password in the original Gazelle? Hmm. <laughs> Did I? Kick myself out. Mm. Let me check. Uh, logging in is the hardest part of the whole thing. Oh, I'm using the Stefan2 user. It's correct. Stefan2. Log in and finally, okay.
Yeah, the color streaming still works. Very good. Mm. Uh, objects with code in them. No. See, you can't find anything in Gazelle. That's just a. Uh, that's like the worst thing about it. 114,000 objects and you can't find anything. Still haven't solved this really. Objects containing the code. Something prevents me from fixing this navigation thing. Uh, I mean, you kind of can get here, get, get there from here by type. Find all objects with custom code. I marked it as useful, so if we list the useful objects, we can also get there. Okay. So now if I go here. Yeah, it's that's embarrassing. I don't know why it's so hard. <laughs> For some reason it's hard to, to do this. Okay. Website enhancer, this is also the one I wanted. And oh yeah, let's just go here, show code. Can you hear the rain? Rain is getting loud. Okay, this checks the object for methods and it has if it has certain methods it shows options. It shows links, commands, and stuff. So this we basically put in the main class. It's fine. Here. Commands. If additional commands for objects, I do think the commands are called items. Are they called items or commands here? Commands? No. Oh yeah, wait. No, they're called items, stupidly. Okay, so replace commands with items. Replace, 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 replace. Let's try to compile. What? Compiles? Really? Just like that? Wow. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Show HTML and stuff. Okay, this is the text renderer the improved version with the color and what do we have here test recognizer with painter image red recognized as 
Nothing. Why nothing? What are you saying? Nothing. Okay, here's the recognizer object. Recognizing one color. What's the problem? Is it not loaded, maybe? It doesn't have to be loaded. That's not the problem. Hmm. Recognized as nothing. Well then, let's have a look. It might be throwing an exception actually. Okay, yeah, something changed. I changed something in the uh, library stuff. Uh, I need to compile the recognizer. I think then we're good. Yeah, recognized as red. As we all know, this is the code for red. So, what can we recognize? We could start with the alphabet, actually. Um, we have the text renderer. And let's say, yeah, let's, yes, let's choose a font. That's a pretty good idea. The backend is based on Java. In Java, we have some fonts, at least a few. We can actually load any true type or open type font. So we can use any font for the font learning if we can legally uh, download it. So font, uh, reified font. So. How do you get fonts in Java? Um, let's say, can we list all the fonts? Let's see. Local font families. Good, let's do that. Local. Uh, there's another one, maybe local font families. Quick and dirty. Okay. Bitstream Charter Career 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 I don't know. 
deja vu, this and that. I have a couple of fonts and also in the, my code repository I have some fonts actually. Um, yeah, let's start with a simple sans, sans, sans serif font. Uh, font. Needs a font size, yeah, whatever, any random size. Um, and we can ask the font things, for example, which characters it actually supports. I think this is a very smart idea not to just render random characters and then it turns out they all come out as empty boxes because it doesn't support them. So, okay, let's do the usual stuff here. Um, I have some function to render things with line breaks. This one here. Simple and effective. Um, okay, let's check the Java documentation. Java font. And it has, for example, num glyphs number of different symbols uh, oh. number of glyphs number of Quite a lot. In these standard fonts, they put in all the languages and uh, new uni uh, the emojis and everything. So uh, nowadays you have thousands of glyphs in a standard font. Um, yeah, so we can just make an image with all of these glyphs or images actually. We want one image for each of these. So, mm, yeah, we make a separate object for this. Uh, font size. It's basically the same as the text rendering object. Just we make we cache all we cache all the uh, we cache all the rendered characters because the learning algorithms will go over these characters again and again and again, so they should be in memory. We probably have enough memory for this. Yeah, we should have some simple lists of all the objects, right? Let's make that first before we go crazy here. List all objects. Wow, isn't that a smart idea? <laughs> Why didn't I come up with this before? Oh, did you stop? Uh, did you leave the stream? 
I see concurrent viewers is zero. That's weird. I mean, it's easier for me. If nobody's listening, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> but I do want to do something. This is actually alcohol, but very mild. It's mostly lemonade and a little, little bit. Smallest, smallest amount of alcohol possible in a drink. So I'm not really getting drunk on stream. Oh, you're back. Okay. Welcome back. Okay, let's make a simple list of objects. Um, Let's just figure out how this works. Complete frame. Two viewers. Is Isha here now? to one viewer. Confusing. Okay, it says test. That's what I wanted. Mapping all the objects. And we can just convert them to HTML in a normal way. Uh, I think it was this to get all objects. Yeah. I claim it's true. Uh, yeah, here, there it is. Is it sorted? No, we simply sort by ID, right? Uh, concept sorted by ID. And we put a heading objects sorted by ID. All objects sorted by ID. And I should learn how to program. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to put the ID on the left. Whatever, at least we have a list. <laughs> it doesn't have the title. Let's fix the title also. Um, set title, does it exist? Let's see. think it exists. Title. Simple setter method. But it will mean I have to recompile 
a huge library which takes I think like 30 seconds Where's our colleague? Yeah, still compiling. Okay. Mm, I think I have to reload this one manually. Reload. Reloading module in three. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. there oh I returned the wrong thing actually all the compilations pointless Okay, now we have something up here too. All objects sorted by ID. We kind of kicked out the gazelle name, but whatever. Okay, so we take the text rendering object. And Or we could just call the object. Do we have to copy it? Maybe not. Just copying code is also not so smart. You change one version. If you change one instance, you have to change the other one too, and everything, and whatever. Gazelle is supposed to optimize this and manage this, but doesn't do it yet. Mm. Yeah, no, we just copy it. It's okay. Uh -huh. Here, no, <laughs> here. Okay, image width, image height, uh, color, background color. White and text color black. Isolate. <clears throat> we don't need that. <coughs> um, 
sorry. So this object retains a list of or a map a map of strings to images. But actually not buffered image, we use our special fancy integral image structure. You remember the one that allows scaling down the image. Cached glyphs. And uh, render glyph. First, we make a background. Uh, background color. We make this object to be able to draw on the image. What's this whole thing called? It's called nothing oh here um cached rendered glyphs okay How can we find out which glyphs the font supports? Glyphs. Hmm. Hmm. How does it work? Okay, if we have a character, we can ask the font if it can display it. That's one method we have. But how do we get the list of all supported characters? We can also find the code it uses for missing characters. You know, the typical uh, empty rectangle. I don't find this actually. Well, let's save the object first. Just to be sure. There. Java find all glyphs in font. As usual, Stack Overflow has an answer. Yeah, they do the normal thing. Just go through all characters and see if it can be displayed. Oh yeah, and somebody raises an objection. That could be ligatures. Like if you have two characters in a row, two certain characters, it will use a special symbol for it. Yeah, but we are not, we don't really care about any of this. Also, two characters might have the same glyph. It's a bit sad that they don't allow this every time, apparently. I mean, in the font description, like true type or something, there's definitely a list of all the glyphs, but Java doesn't allow this to be queried, I think. Not to worry, let's just go through all the characters, it's fine.
cache all glyphs. We could use a lot of memory, but whatever. can display uh, cache glyphs put Not there. We create it. Caching glyph. See. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay, some wrongness here. It's actually called text color, and you can convert from an int to a character implicitly. Okay, text is not defined, set font. Mm -hmm. Set font there. It compiles, that's good. Okay, now it's making all these 6,000 images. Oh, it's done. And if I reload, it's instant because it keeps all these images. Okay, so apparently we don't run out of memory. That's cool. Let's show a random one of these. Random Can I do random on a map? Let's see. I think I can. Random of map. Yes, I can. I'm getting a pair of stuff. Example. And we just put in the image. <laughs> I 
Am I typing too fast or can you can you follow stuff? Let's improve this method a bit. Wow, cool, that's good. Um, So when is the internship ending? It's ending this week, right? Ah, oh, I'm stupid. I actually screwed up this method here, but I noticed and I fixed it. This should work now. Yes, it does. And oh, Friday. Okay. At least I have the money again to pay you. <laughs> in in between, I didn't even have that. So I kind of, you know, did a gamble. But uh, now I have the money, so it's all fine. Uh, it will recalculate uh, all the images because I changed the code. In the code it says uh, transient. The actual map of the images is transient because if I save this in the database it's gonna... It should work actually but it's gonna make a huge blob in the database. Hey check it out a random glyph which is actually a symbol I have never seen before. <laughs> the standard fonts contain symbols. I've, yeah, this one I've seen in you know, lots of letters with uh, the diacritics, I think is the word. Like any kind of, yes, yeah, this was a ligature, ligature. What is this here? This is certainly a foreign language. Yeah, they have gotten very international. with their fonts. Yeah. Okay, for the recognition, there's one here, we're gonna get them, all the international ones too. For the recognition, we can use some really simple method to start. We are making ultra fast recognition, right? So what is the fastest way? The fastest way is to calculate one single number and use this number to distinguish the glyphs. And what is the single number? We can see uh, the simplest number we get out of the integral image structure. It's actually the brightness of the image. That's the simplest number. We reduce it to one single pixel and say give us the pixel value. So this is effectively the image's brightness. And you know, it should distinguish a lot of letters because most of the letters have different amounts of black in them. So if we knew the circ know the circumstances, if we know the background color, the foreground color, the precise painting method, the size and the font, then we can just use this one number to distinguish stuff. Of course, it's not very robust, but it's okay. It's one of the methods, okay? If the if the font we use doesn't change, I mean normally if you read text, the font you read use, the font you look at doesn't change. That's the usual usual case. So for that case, we can make something really really fast, and we can still if there's more time, we always have these probabilistic schedulers, where you have a probability that goes from one down, and. Uh, if you have more time to calculate, you just go into the branches with lower probabilities. Or you you check stuff again. So um, we can always have the simple case and the complicated cases in one program. And it will choose between them smartly. So let's calculate this one number here. Uh, 
brightness. Uh, I think average brightness is the function. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, let's see. can do something smarter. We can use this recognizer object I have with the cells. Um, yeah, it does the same thing basically. It's called U recognizer. I think it's for ultra fast recognition. Oh, good, good. Yeah, U recognizer for ultra fast. It takes the integral image and then you can do some stuff. <coughs> it has this cell concept. You say root cell and root cell is the whole image. And you can divide the cell horizontally and vertically. I talked to this about, uh, to, about this to Isha a little bit last week. So she knows a bit about it. So you can always split the cell and um, you can also do color changes. You can say I can change the contrast and the brightness. Um, various things you can do. And where do I get the value? Average color. Do I have brightness in here? I have, but only in the black white cell, which is a subclass. Color, color. Yeah, maybe we can put that in the main cell also. Um, you can get the individual color channels like red, green, and blue, but I think it's cool to have the overall brightness too. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, the naming is a bit stupid. If I say brightness, I get the black and white version of the cell. Let's put this in here. Average brightness. There. Whatever. should have it. Uh -huh. Okay, the brightness is 0 0.99. It's mostly white because we have white border around it and everything. But we have this mega uh, precision, full floating point precision. And my guess is that almost all of the symbols have a different brightness. See, they do. So what we could do is put them into a list. That should be instructive. Cache render glyphs. Actually, this is kind of done for now. Maybe we'll make a method to export the map. Yeah. Uh, get glyph map. Okay. 
cool. So we make a new object. Ah, uh, no, let's start empty. Okay, um, show glyph list by brightness. Twenty-eight. Get glyph map map. And we simply sort the map. We have this tree set with the duplicates. What now is set? We want a map. No, it's a multi map. That's what it is. Multi map. Yes, map to mod to. Let's see. Multi map because one brightness might have multiple glyphs, so it's a multi map. You can look up the concept somewhere. Map to multi map, but I want it to be a sorted one. Tree multi map should work. No? Looks like I have to make a new. To map to tree map now. To map to multi map. Yeah, okay. Map to tree multi map. Uh, Java X method I didn't have yet. Wow. Okay. Tree multi map. I just got to pop up on the other screen. Two viewers. Who is viewing us? Oh, I had an idea uh, to give people uh, money for watching the stream. Like, not a lot of money, just like, I don't know, 10 cents an hour. <laughs> but just if people watch the stream and like are a bit active in the chat, then like the bot contacts them and says, here, Give you PayPal, you're gonna be paid. I don't know. I mean, why not? It's we have the budget. It's kind of a fun idea. Yeah, there's so many ways you can use money, right? I mean, mm, no, this is not perfect though. We no wait, 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 wait. I, this was nonsense anyway. This map has the text as the key, but what we want is the this as the key, and we want the, the text here. So it's all nonsense anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about this paying people for watching this stream. I mean, we can always stop it again. If it gets too expensive, we'll stop it. And they do have to like, I mean, chat a little bit or something. So they just don't just turn on and don't watch. Mm -hmm. Brightness or multi map. And we go through the map. Text. Image. Map puts Yeah, let's make an alias. The method is called root cell. But it should be okay to use code cell. Look at this great construct. I can make two functions at once. 
with the aka modifier that you only find in JavaX. So average average brightness. Uh, it's not going to compile, but I will try. Yeah, that's all. It's so snappy. This new database with only a few objects, it reacts instantly. For some reason, I think in the original Gazelle, if you go to edit or go show a list, it somehow scans all the objects. It scans all the 100,000 objects, does something with them but that it shouldn't. There's something inefficient. So now here, when I click on edit, it's just like, boom, it's there. Somebody complained that the Gazelle checkout page is too slow. It usually isn't, but yeah, it's not very really slow. I know. I couldn't look. I think he loaded the page right when I reloaded the code or something. He said it takes 20 seconds to load the page from America. <laughs> so. <coughs> he thought my server needs more juice, but uh, it was just a fluke, I think. Okay, now we just print them a map. Uh, not to map. Not to map. Something like this. Uh, uh, um. So this is the brightness value, and brightness something, and then we show all the symbols. Not get brightness. Okay. Uh, symbols by brightness. Okay. Interesting. It is a long list. That's pretty cool. Look at this. Mm. Let's, let's show the number. N equals I just want to show the count. N equals one, N equals one, N equals two sometimes, N equals three. Yeah, but these may actually just be identical. We didn't check for that actually. These look different, but this is because it's a browser font. Usually it's n equals one, so it kind of works. The trick works. For this brightness, there's only one symbol in the font. And that's for most of the cases. So for this special case where we know the font and we only have one symbol in our view, we can use this one step and we are done. We just use one lookup in a table and our recognition is done. 
Of course, usually we'll have text, you know, multiple characters and stuff. But it's the first step. Yeah, these all have to be empty. If it says brightness 1.0, there's no more question. These all are just white. Yeah, so we should um, not render stuff again when it's actually identical. Um, how could we do that? Uh, yeah, this is a simple trick, I guess. Um, lift by hash. We just make a hash, okay, of the image. And uh, yeah, that's a good idea. I have something like an image in the five. MD5 of image. No. Oh, you mean image MD5. <laughs> okay. Image MD5. Yeah, it goes to the pixels and uses a normal MD5 algorithm. It's a reasonable way of making uh, an image hash. Okay, image MD5. function of it. Okay. Um. Glyph by hash. If it doesn't exist. If it exists, yeah, if it exists, we use that one. If it doesn't, we put it in the hash database. All right, and then we put this here. The elegant thing is that this class works the same way as before, but additionally, we can check. Uh, images for identity. If the image is the same, it will have the exact, it will be the exact same Java object. So these here will all be the exact same Java object, and we can check that. And we can display that too. It's rendering the stuff again, and it's a bit more complicated than before because it goes, does all the hashing and everything. You know, it's a bit of work. Oh, the poor machine. Okay, there it is. And let's show how many different images we have. Um, 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 it's called identity hash set. Do we have something like this? Make it 
Yes, we have. I need to find this identity. Okay. Hello. Actually, different images. Different equals. Yeah, 69 symbols, but only one actually different image. So, but sometimes we do have different symbols, like here, what is this? An eye with some accent and a small eye with a different accent. And these just happen to have the same brightness. So here also similar stuff. So it doesn't always work, but it works in quite a few cases. So what if the simple algorithm doesn't work? And we have to split up the image. Um. This is so nice looking at all the different Samples. Let's put a border around it. How do you put a border around an image? Border color. No. Border one point x. Solid black. I seem to remember. Oh, it has to recalculate. We can actually preserve the data. Can we? Let's see what I think. Yeah, I guess there's a way to preserve calculated data even when the code changes I could think about that here it worked actually okay okay so what is the advanced recognition the advanced recognition is for example to zoom in right now we're looking at the whole thing here and on the left on the right and top and bottom it's always white so we can simply crop that and move to the inside, move to the center. And we can simply use a very, very downscaled version of the image for recognition. Okay, if we have this zoom, zoom area and we split it in, let's say, uh, three times three pixels. Then we have black here, black here, white here, white here, black here, black here, pretty black down here. And we always do the exact calculation. We take the brightness of each of these little areas and we calculate it as we saw before with all the precision. So actually we use the same trick we used before with the brightness table for each of these nine, let's say, nine little rectangles. So we use the trick nine times, so we have pretty good chances of actually uniquely recognizing the letter. And we used very little data. We can even do this just for the cases we haven't solved yet. So the recognizer that comes out is really small. It has this brightness list we saw before. And then for all the problem cases, it has a little com more complicated list, but not even that complicated. And with this, we could kind of get most of the recognition done. Uh, but there's another thing we want to do, maybe, it, uh, yeah, we definitely want to do, it's reconstruct the image. The perfect, rec rec uh, the perfect recognition of an image 
will give an algorithm to repaint the image. Like the shortest algorithm that paints this image. Here there is a straight line, here there is something like either it's a semicircle or it's uh, a spline. Here's another straight line and this is also some kind of curved line with a different thickness. So with a few instructions you could repaint this character and then you have truly recognized it. I would say that's the perfect definition of recognition is being able to paint it. And that's also very easy to recognize for us to verify for a computer. It runs the painting algorithm and it checks pixel by pixel if we have made the same thing. So then we have recognized it. And this recognition stuff, um, this image reconstruction stuff, we can also do on uh, images from the real world. Let's say, nice image search here. It's a free image search. I love it. Uh, here. Ah, that's a difficult one. Let's say this one here. I stock where? How do? What? Are we not on Pixabay anymore? We have a whole chatbot that does Pixabay searches actually. We made this in the Gazelle, in the older Gazelle project. I should reactivate this. I don't know, let's, let's take this here. How do we reconstruct this image? First it's a background that is one color it seems. And then you have these small things and it's like a vector graphics so it's pretty simple to have an algorithm. This is also just an ellipse with a fuzzy uh, border. So the algorithm to make this shouldn't be that complicated. So we also compress images. We can do so many things at once here. Recognition, reconstruction and compression. I like this, I want to save this. Most of these images are kind of, you know, have very good licenses, free for commercial use. You can actually use these images because that's the problem usually um, using images from the web. They're always copyrighted and stuff. Maybe it's fair use to recognize the images, but maybe it's not fair use. And you don't want to get letters from lawyers about this stuff. Yeah, I mean, other question is what is if we, if we have a text with an actual text with multiple characters, what then? Uh, render text. Yeah, what about this here? What about this? So there are different ways. We can actually just look for empty space and say we cut beforehand, but it depends on the font. With this font here, it seems okay. But if they overlap a little, it gets difficult. Or we just use our uh, subdivision technique. Uh, recursively subdividing. And then we find these points, we find these lines and then the next stage of the algorithm constructs letters from these lines. Once again, in a probabilistic way. So if we happen to split this letter in the middle here, we will find this part of the line and this another, another part. And so the algorithm says, okay, maybe this is one line. And then it kind of one. As soon as it merges these lines again, it can reconstruct the letter. I like this approach, it's very geometric and very conservative with memory and everything and runtime. I think this will be a winner. Uh, being able to recognize all text on screen and stuff. And the other tricky thing to recognize windows on the screen. I've thought about this so much also and I think it's a good way to do it with this probabilistic thing and with starting with a whole image and only separating when it's interesting. 
You may have a big screen. Maybe your screen has, what is the latest, 4K. So if you like do something with all the pixels, it's never going to finish. But if you take the screen as a whole, and you will quickly find out that this is just black, you can just skip these areas. It doesn't matter how many pixels are in there. You never look at the individual pixels or just very quickly to see if it's actually black. So I think with this approach, it's possible to solve the complexity pro plot problem of uh, image recognition. Yeah, I'm just still looking for the way to work. I'm kind of, I gotten, I've gotten so lazy in a way. I don't have this energy anymore to get up and code and code and code. I used to have it, but I kind of don't have it anymore. It's just, I don't know. Uh, don't really know what the reason is. So I need to find a way to work with people and do the work together and uh, get this somewhere. Yeah, and also, of course, a recognition of uh, webcam stuff. One idea is to just have the webcam run for a minute and have the software find things. <laughs> Age. I'm so old. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, we can detect motion. It's not that hard, I think. Let's say we divide this whole image uh, into six pixels. And I move my head, then I have movement. I have a change in brightness here. But there's almost no change in brightness in the other five pixels. So we can immediately zoom in and say, okay, some movement is here. And kind of isolate the face. And then you find some tracking point. There are natural tracking points in the face, like eyes and whatever in the mouth. Natural tracking points. And if you have those, you can find how the face moves. How the face moves. You can make some snapshots. And you can determine the exact, exact shape even. Now you can separate the background from the moving stuff. Uh, all the magic things that neural networks do, I think we can actually do this too. With just a few clever algorithms and like a mathematical approach. Once again, the mathematical truth behind it is that if I take, cut out the face and paste it somewhere else, I get the next frame in the movement. Not exactly, but kind of. So the simplest transformations on the image that yield the next image in the sequence we declare those to be the solution, to be what actually happens. And when you find the font of the face, you can do some feature checks, to try to detect who the person is. Oh, I mean, I don't know, if you have a hand and if you have, if you count with a hand, right? It's pretty mathematical, it's just, three of these long bright things and here there's just two of the long bright things so if you if you store this as a, a scaled down image you don't have to store that much stuff you just store a really really simple version of all the objects you want to recognize and any other object I don't know this is a pretty dark object and it is rectangular I'm thinking this is possible. Definitely not easy, but I think possible. Yeah. Streaming, however, is kind of a lot of work, especially if you talk all the time. I don't know how people do it, but um, I, I might even stop the stream here. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing I'm looking for right now, the mode of work. We have a bit of funding. We have all the time in the world. Uh, we have lots of ideas. How do we make the next things? We could also try to work on the interface for new users. If somebody actually buys this, like this $5 AI, what do they get? Like starting page for them. So I can work with a web designer on these starting pages. And that's probably a good idea, make more websites. Uh, and I want more uh, analytics on the website. 
I'm not sure how many people even look at all my websites. I really have no idea right now. I don't even have Google Analytics, so I don't know if my homepage is super popular or nobody visits it. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. Yeah, I think that was it for right now. Thanks to my loyal worker, Alicia. And uh, yeah, we'll continue this definitely.